Despite the Bond series being well known for featuring an ever-rotating main cast of villains and allies, aside from the Bond actors themselves, there has always been a recurring face or three to give the series an extra sense of familiarity with every new installment. There has never been a James Bond film without at least one returning cast member from the previous film, but with No Time to Die signaling the end of the Daniel Craig era with the uh, fullest of full stops, what does that mean for the characters and actors beside him that we've come to love over the years. Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. Obviously, there have been many recurring actors throughout the Bond series history, but these are the four that I would identify as the biggest hitters and overlappers over the course of the series' entire run. Starting way back in 1962 with Lois Maxwell, who played the part of Miss Moneypenny from the very first Bond film, Dr. No, all the way through to A View to a Kill 23 years later. That's 14 consecutive movies, never missing an assignment. Good work, Ms. Maxwell. You get the gold star for attendance. Overlapping with much of her tenure, but extending beyond into the Dalton and Brosnan eras, is Desmond Llewellyn, of course, who played Q, starting with 1963's From Russia With Love, and he played the part in 17 films up until 1999's The World Is Not Enough. I'd love to dish out another gold star for attendance, but sadly Desmond was left out of 1973's Live and Let Die, so, uh, well, I guess maybe we can just give you silver instead. Then overlapping with Desmond's tenure as Q is Judy Dench as M, who played the role from 1995's Goldeneye, all the way up to 2012's Skyfall. Or are we counting her uncredited cameo in Spectre too? I mean, I guess we should? Okay, okay, up, up to 2015's Spectre, which brings her total to eight films. Or, yeah, seven, depending on where you stand on counting uncredited cameos. And completing this overlapping stretch is Rory Kinnear as Bill Tanner, with just four films under his belt from 2008's Quantum of Solace through 2021's No Time to Die. As I say, there are many more recurring characters and actors throughout the years, but these are the main leapfroggers of longest tenures, and I think in the cases of both Desmond Llewellyn and Judi Dench, it's particularly fascinating because both of those actors continued through monumental shakeups in the Bond series, License to Kill to Goldeneye and Die Another Day to Casino Royale, respectively. They were the only cast members returning to their roles after everyone else had been recast, and in Judy's case especially, after a pretty clear reboot of the entire 007 universe, they made a very conscious choice to retain a high-profile figure in the cast, whether that led to general audience confusion over continuity or not. I mean, surely if they wanted Casino Royale to be the cleanest of slates, then it would have made more sense to recast the role of N, and yet I'm thrilled that Dench carried on in the role in a new era and the precedent for at least one familiar face throughout the series was retained. So, unless they're gonna go places with cloning that would make even Moonraker seem like science fact, I think that we are in for a fresh slate of continuity when Bond 26 rolls around. But, of Ray Fiennes, Rory Kinnear, Naomi Harris, and Ben Whishaw, are we likely to see any of these actors returning to the series? Well, this is my two cents on the matter. Starting with the current M, Gareth Mallory, played by Ray Fiennes, and for my money, the most likely candidate to return in that same role. Much like how Judy Dench's M's were two different characters in the Brosnan and Craig eras, I would expect the character's name to change from Gareth Mallory to something else, or maybe he'll just go by M and there'd be no mention made of his actual name at all, but anyway, Fiennes has expressed in interviews that he's keen to return, like this quote from Total Film. If anyone from Eon Films is listening, I'm very keen to continue training the new Bond. I love playing M and I love being a part of that franchise. But who knows, things have to change. But I love working with Daniel, he's a terrific Bond, I will treasure that experience. I also still really love the fact that he actually fought back against the decision to turn his version of M into a villain in Spectre. Although I think I can say now that I had to fight off an attempt by Sam in, in uh, Spectre to make M. I said, I don't want to play M and then you turn around and make him the bad guy. M is never the bad guy. Oh wow, he was going to be on the so other I side. Had to, I had yeah. to have some pretty intense discussions with Sam saying, this is not flying with me. <laughs> so uh, wait, was he in know. league with Blofeld? Was yeah, yeah, twist? no, it was like, yes, he was Blofeld or something, but um, that was... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was a red line. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly not against the very concept of M being a bad guy at some point in the future. It may well be a fun twist in the right story. I think it makes a clear point to show that, well, he obviously really enjoys playing this part and wants to continue in it. Fines is obviously a terrific, prestigious actor of the same stature as Judy Dench, and there's something that just feels right for someone of such an acclaimed acting profile to be M. He clearly has a great versatility, and they 
could take the character in a multitude of different ways with him in the part, and he'd obviously be more than able to do it. With Ray Fiennes, we have a high-profile, acclaimed actor who cares about the character, more than willing to return to the series, so all the right boxes are ticked for me. I mean, I guess all we need is a willing call from Eon Productions, and jobs are good'n. So in terms of likelihood, looking at this evidence, I think that Fiennes is the strongest candidate for a potential reprisal, and personally speaking, I'd be totally game for that with just one small note. After seeing the menu recently, I'm all for the character having a side gig in a restaurant kitchen. <laughs> Maybe he could take over rules in London, seeing as he likes that place so much. Next up, it's Rory Kinnear, who of course played Bill Tanner in four consecutive films, and despite that prominence in the Craig era, I would say that the character is still somewhat far off being the house household name that, you know, Q, Moneypenny, and M became. I mean, I'd be surprised if general audiences even picked up on the character at all, beyond maybe noticing that there's some dude who looks like Veruca Salt's dad popping up to spout exposition every once in a while. Rory Kinnear is quite similar to Fines in a lot of ways, like, the terrific actor of much acclaim, he has been praised and awarded for his stage work, and he's had many a memorable turn in films and TV shows. If you want to get a really good, condensed, uh, impression of Rory Kinnear's broad versatility as an actor, I highly recommend seeking out the film Men. I didn't like the film all that much, but he is brilliant in it, he plays a variety of roles really well, and uh, well, if, if you ever wanted to see Bill Tanner completely stark bollock naked, congratulations, we have the film to do that. Despite that, I don't think it's unfair to say that he never really had the opportunity to do all that much as Tanner. In a version of one of uh, Spectre's scripts, he was revealed to be a turncoat agent, and that would have presumably given him something more meaty to do, but that concept obviously never made it through to the final draft. Uh, what is it with Spectre trying to turn one of the MI6 lot into a bad guy? Were they just working their way through the roles until they reached the MI6 cleaning lady? The character of Tanner is hardly a fan favourite role, and his appearances throughout the entire history of the Bond series has been spotty at best, so who's to say that this character will even appear again, or in the next film at least? And as I say, he tends to be a functional exposition spouter, so I don't know how in interesting a role that is for someone who has many options, like Rory Kinnear, but uh, nonetheless, he has expressed interest in returning. Yeah, it's great fun to be a part of, and great fun to see the scale of operations. I can totally understand if they want to reset the whole thing for next time, but also totally understand if they wanted some sense of continuity. I've never known film to film if I would pop up again, so this doesn't feel any different to the others, really. It's really cool that he's up for returning, and I guess it's a similar case to Fines, in that they're both just maybe waiting for the Eon call to tell them whether or not they're gonna be in the next one or not. But as I say, given the Tanner character's spotty attendance throughout the series' history, I don't even, like, I'm not gonna put money on that character even returning, so... You know, he's not in the upper echelons like um, Q and Moneypenny are when it comes to audience expectations for what they're going to get out of a Bond film. I actually wouldn't mind if Kinnear returned to the series in a different role, though. I mean, if Fines doesn't come back for whatever reason, I could actually totally see Rory Kinnear working as a new M, or even Q, in all honesty. I don't think the actor's versatility quite extends to him being a possible Moneypenny candidate, but I think he's a great actor. He could probably do much more with the meteor roles of M or Q, and in all honesty, I would imagine Kinnear's prospects of returning to the series do indeed lie with a different role than Bill Tanner. Ah, Naomi Harris, possibly the best series ambassador for the modern Bond era. As well as being a brilliant Miss Moneypenny, I think the actress won over Bond fans through her appearances at events promoting the series, as well as just never having a bad word to say about the films. I mean, I've grown to really adore her presence over the years, and think of her as a really valuable player in Bond's ensemble, and I would just be heartbroken if she didn't return. And sure enough, she seems to be keen and willing, so maybe my dream will come true after all. This is a quote from a Radio Times interview. Interview. I would love to come back because the franchise means so much to me. I've loved it. It's felt like reuniting with the family every time I've gone back to do a Bond movie, so I would hate to lose that in my life. But, you know, the franchise needs to go where it needs to go, so I don't know what the future holds. So much the same as with Fines and Kinnear, but I am gonna run the risk of saying something quite controversial here uh, when I say that as much as I have absolutely adored Harris's Moneypenny, I feel like I would rather see the role recast for a new Bond. <laughs> 
Can please hear me out. I'm kind of of the opinion, I think, that I like each Bond to have their own specific money penny because I think that the individual chemistry is everything in that relationship and those scenes, and a continuing money penny allows for some unfair comparisons, I think. I mean, I adore Lois Maxwell in the parts, but the shift in chemistry is very evident between her Connery and Moore films, the latter lacking some of the sexual frisson that I think is necessary for truly great Bond money penny scenes. But then who's to say that Harris would even need to return as that same character? I mean, given her great affection for the series and ambassadorship, I'd kind of love for her to return in some capacity, and at the risk of sounding something like a broken record at this point, I could totally see her returning as a new version of M. I mean, she's a brilliant performer with a lot of versatility, and I think she could totally bring something fresh to the role. Uh, can't we just have three M's in the next era of Bond, please? And finally, we come to Ben Whishaw, who, uh, well, first of all, don't worry, I'm not going to suggest that he also be M, but if there was ever a Bond recurring role that an actor could really settle into and go for decades, it's Q. Desmond Llewellyn was and is beloved by fans of many a Bond generation. He was a hard act to follow, and yes, John Cleese took over the role for a single film, but even though Whishaw has only been in three films, I feel like he's very cemented in the part. The reinvention of the character, I think, proved to be a really great success and I'd love to see Ben continue on. However, of the four actors we're focusing on, he certainly seems to be the most downbeat on the prospect of returning, uh, saying in an interview with The Independent, I think that they're probably starting all over again, and that might be the right thing, but of course, I don't know that for certain. I mean, I think there's so many options for them, and I'm not privy to any of the discussion at all, so we'll see. And also telling the BBC on the prospect of returning, I have absolutely no idea. I know nothing. They are incredibly tight-lipped about everything, really. I have a suspicion I won't be coming back. Now, this might well just be Wishaw's a bit more pessimistic than his fellow MI6s, because the meat of what he's saying is essentially exactly the same thing, isn't it? Like, I don't know anything, they don't tell me anything, I'm just waiting for the call. But the fact that in other articles a little while ago he was grumbling about, like, you know, Q's sexuality reveal, if you want to call it that, how that was presented in No Time to Die, there were elements that he was displeased with, and I do just wonder if he's just less enthusiastic about the prospect of returning to the series at all when compared with his counterparts anyway. A part of the issue, well, I mean, if you can call it an issue, uh, with Wishaw, is that much like Fines, Kinnear and Harris, he's a movie star in his own right, a stage star in his own right, a TV star in his own right. This is obviously a very high-class problem, like, oh no, the series has attracted really acclaimed, high-profile, brilliant actors to these parts. But for Ben Wishaw, who can lead a movie or TV series of his own and have meaty, dramatic material to sink his teeth into, Will he be willing to pop onto Bond for a week or so to do a largely expositional scene? Will he think of that as being kind of worth his time? The Craig era obviously expanded the role of the traditional MI6 recurring characters to make the most of their incredibly versatile and acclaimed cast. And in most of these cases and in most of these films, I think it works quite well. I think that Ben Wishaw is one of the best elements of No Time to Die Full Stop. That being said, I don't know if there is much of a desire for M. Q and Moneypenny 2 have such large roles in every film that they appear in, but moving forward, if the series wants to attract such A-list talent to those parts, I would assume that they would want to use them and those roles would indeed have to be expanded. Or Eon could just load up the bullion for home delivery to get them back, I guess. So just to reiterate, in order of most likely to least likely to return, I think that Rafe finds back as M is totally within the realm of possibility, and I could totally see that happening. Kinnear and Harris follow in my ranking, but I would say that the likelihood of their returns lie with characters other than the ones that they've been playing throughout the Craig era. Uh, namely, like I say, I could see them both coming back as M's. And finally, at the bottom of the list, sadly, is Ben Wishaw, who would probably in all honesty be my absolute favourite to return, but I find him the least likely due to some of the comments that he's made in the media about the possibility of returning, just sounding a bit more downbeat about the whole prospect. We don't really go in for that anymore. Please do let me know your thoughts on this subject in the comment section below. Specifically, like 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 I've done, if you want to list your kind of ranking of like most likely to least likely, um, that would be awesome. Please do that in the comments below. And also below, of course, you can click the subscribe button and the Mrs. Bell notification button. Stay super up to date on future video uploads that I make on this channel. There are also a variety of links below to my other social media pages, so please do follow those and follow me there if you care to do so. And with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.